as you study the viability of a new stadium or perhaps renovating the existing one, what fan engagement aspects do you take into consideration? Well, um, I know I've heard on the previous panel we, we talked about um, sports betting. So it's not legal yet in, in New York State, but, but we're thinking that at some point in the future that there, that's going to be a, a big game changer. And so, you know, we're, right now we're going through a feasibility study on, on a renovation in a new stadium. And one of the things is like, so by the time we end up getting to do something and then having to build something for the next 50 years, um, you know, we, we have to think about what is it, what does it look like? And sports betting is certainly, you know, the conversation that we're having and how does that change the in-venue experience, whether you're, we're, you know, at, at the, when, you know, when it happens, if, if it's mobile um, and, and the technology behind it. And so we're trying to think about first, not how do we build it, you know, from the concrete and the, and the wiring, but how do we, how is it going to be used and what are our fans going to want for it? So are they going to want areas where they can, you know, be looking at, at a ton of different games or we're, you know, we're going to have to have the, the 5G technology that, we, that uh, we're all talking about now about, you know, so we can get that information quicker, faster. And what is the league going to do to, you know, safeguard the technology and how is that going to affect our stadium? So um, to us, that is, you know, really big. And, and to your point, the same thing, how do we get that mass intimacy in a stadium? And we're all talk about how do we get you know, more people to come to the stadium when every, it's so easy and so much fun to watch it wherever you on your phone at, or at home. Um, so how do you create a space that's large enough to have 70,000 people or, or less or somewhere around there, but then be able to make it really intimate and personalized as we talked about it. So it's, um, and then try to think about it, you know, over the next 10, 20, 50 years. <laughs> yeah, and I think there, there have been a lot of clubs that have done some really interesting things in that, in that um, sort of area. I think on the gambling thing, it's an important thing to talk about in terms of um, we do believe that it is likely to be like the next thing in engagement. And how that manifests itself, no one quite understands yet. I will tell you in New Jersey now where we, you know, where it's legal, there's a lot of in-venue in uh, uh, sports betting, and it's done at sort of around a, the average is around a ten dollar or so kind of level. So this is obviously Wait, are you talking about like at MetLife? Yeah, yeah. So like it's it's a um, you know it's a fun way to engage, and how does that manifest itself from a, a free to play way to engage, um, and all that kind of thing. So all those things are being thought about and considered. The one area where we are currently most focused on is. In the context of that, the integrity of the game becomes paramount to everything. So how do you think about that from a compliance perspective? And there are so many people involved in a game. So really focusing on that, and that has been rolling out. And then working with um, our digital and, frankly, broadcast partners, who I think can uh, play a real role here. And they're very interested. And I heard on the last panel around, you know, what is it going to mean? Is it a game changer? And I think, you know, still, the largest, most concurrent audiences are on that broadcast television. So the extent to which you can increase engagement there, it starts to pay dividends pretty quickly. And I do believe that this aspect of the game and how people are going to watch will make a difference in that area. It'd be an interesting left turn for people like me to make after years of very purposefully staying away from any of those right. references. <laughs> and, uh, and as Marianne said, you know, the um, it's going to allow. So you know, of course, you know, we have our we have our own fan base. And uh, but I think sports betting and the engagement that it provides across the whole league to all clubs is going to help us as a club garner new fans. Because now we're going to, you know, if if you are a a Vikings fans, you don't necessarily watch a Bills game. Why would you, right? But with fantasy and then now with the um, sports betting, now we're going to get um, eyeballs on our game and, and our fans. Um, and, and that's going to actually really expand our market and our engagement and how we think about that. Because now we're not just going to um, have an opportunity to engage with the, the avid fans that we know we have, but all the possibilities out there because we're going to have more eyes on us. Yeah, I would argue that fantasy has changed that entirely already. Okay. That mm -hmm. uh, if you're a fan of uh, the NFL, you follow your team, but then you also follow all of the teams, which is right. why Red yeah. Zone is so popular right. because right. everyone has a fantasy team that they're following. Right.